Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 9th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host Wombat on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello, it's me, the Wombat. It's nice to meet everybody. Our guest today are, is John Richards from England. Welcome. Hello. Hello. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, I'll bet you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have over a thousand of us in the Atheist Society of Knoxville, right. or ASK. Yeah. And we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're talking about design, and I can't think of a better group with a better design name than ask for an atheist group. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's right. You should ask. Keep asking those questions. Yeah, yeah. I still remember that um, business card I found, and I was just like, this is just the coolest thing possible. Okay, but Atheist Society of Knoxville, definitely check them out. It's a great group. Where, where did you find that card? So you had given me that card the first day we had met when I went to the meetup group. And I had, it. whenever I accept uh, cards, I remember I didn't mm. look at the back of it until like I already got home. And I was just like, oh, hey, this is a, ask. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I love no, that. That's so no, I, I left back in the early days of ASK. I printed cards on my own computer and left them everywhere okay. uh, so that people would find them. And I was just wondering if, if you'd found one of those somewhere. Hey, I put it up on our bulletin board at work when <clears> I was so all right pretty good so guys i want to catch up see how everyone's doing and then we can delve into the topic of design and what we mean by it because it means probably different things to different people so (laughs) how about this we'll open it up larry tell me how you've been over the last couple weeks and what do you think design means to you well last week i wasn't available for the show because i was on vacation and uh, i spent most of the week uh, just playing computer games and just generally taking it easy but on the weekend when we do the show i was in west tennessee visiting my niece and that was very nice so it was all good enjoyed it cool and what does design mean to you my friend oh my design yeah when when, uh something someone an entity a person generally uh, lays out a plan to build something and then they follow that plan to create the thing that they're going to build uh it's pretty straightforward Pretty straightforward, you would think, right? Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll see. John Richards, you're you're all around the globe and in and, and anticipating even more spots to globe trot. But how you been? Don't don't show off too much and tell me what design <laughs> means to you. Well, I've been okay, thank you very much, and doing huh? my usual scheming and and wheeling and dealing. Love it. And ha- having fun. This is the, the, advantage, the advantage of being retired. You can, mm. you, can, you can do what you want, pretty much. So what does design mean to me? Well, it's, it's the first part of making something. You can't Ooh. make something without that. having an idea, a concept of okay. what it's going to be. And that coming up with that concept and creating the detail of it that's designing. Yeah, it's sort of it, like setting out the outline or a goal for something, right? Yeah. So making intent, the, the foundation yeah. intent. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the interesting thing about it is for agents like humans, it can be done from blank. I mean, you can start with a clean sheet of paper, nothing mm. on it at all. Mm. And that's where you make your design. Mm. which is very different from evolution, of course, because right. e- evolution doesn't start from a blank. It, uh, it's the opposite. It, it starts with something that exists and then tries to modify it. It's a now, bit like... Up. Now, every Christian will tell you, every scientist says that evolution says the world came from nothing, but that doesn't make any sense. But what are you saying? Well, evolution, of course, doesn't deal with how the world began. It ah. just deals with how the diversity occurred. We've got a good Very explanation well. for diversity, but we don't yet have a good explanation. We've got some hypotheses, but we don't have a, a an agreed theory for how it all began yet. Right, yeah. right. But um, uh, the, the thing about 
evolution is it's like it would be like in in sort of design terms it would be like going into your designer's shop your the studio where he does a design giving him a tank you know as a military vehicle and saying i want you to turn that into a jumbo jet that's what evolution does right yeah that's not that, that that's not what uh, creation does I, I love the way how you said it at first. It's just, it's the first part of making something, but along with that comes an intent to make a particular thing. It's not just, hey, anything that works is is fine. It's more of like a very, def- uh, you're trying to get to a defined point of creation or, or uh, a product. And it's sort of like in my head, where if I gave that sheet of paper and I gave it to like four people and I said, um, design something. And there's at the end of the day, there's just scribbles all around that piece of paper. There's like screws on one corner because they didn't want to work together. There's like a bird on one side. Someone drew a tree on the other side. I'd be like, you didn't design anything. Sure, you, you try to make something and this paper is different than when I gave it to you, but there's no coalescence of like yeah. intent. You know, you had to design something together or make mm. a, a, a singular thing as a group, yeah. but you didn't right. do that. There's no intent for what you guys are planning on making. And I find yeah. like, what do you, what are those four kids called? That's evolution <laughs> in a sense, because evolution is very much a, I'm throwing everything I possibly can on the wall. I'm going to see, I'm, I don't even care if it works or if it doesn't work. But if it does work, fantastic. That's great. Now we have some biodiversity. Now the next, you know, ev- uh, environmental change, maybe it kills some things, maybe it doesn't kill some things. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to be different at every opportunity. Mm-hmm. And and the mutations that come about through evolution are not designed or planned out ahead of time. They are no. literally random uh, mm-hmm. changes in DNA that cause slight mutations in offspring and some diversity. Larry, what do you think? Well, absolutely. Uh, it, enti- it implies intent, but also don't forget, I'm sure you don't, that there are uh, rules involved. There are chemical rules and physical rules, you know, uh, physics involved. Uh, all of the design, I mean, all of the evolutionary changes have to follow those particular rules, even from the very start, or we couldn't get where we are. Nothing would work if it didn't follow those rules. And they are enforced uh, by the laws of nature and the laws of physics. The way I think about it is instead of saying as rules, because it implies there's a rule maker, there's simply limitations. Mm-hmm. There's physical limitations. There that's, there's that's chemical good. I limitations. I like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. it's not like I can put marshmallows into DNA. Like that's not going to work. But like I can work with certain base groups. And the sad thing is, the sad thing, and, and this is an actual thing, is while there are chemical limitations, there ha- there can be cases where the chemical limits are pushed too far and the thing that is produced through evolution is not capable of sustaining itself through life mm-hmm. and, not viable. And, right not viable and life is filled with of, of uh, with a plethora of these non-viable forms that either suffer or are stillborn or never make it to a point where they have a, a fair chance of survival in a cutthroat universe And so it's really unfortunate because we do have this appreciation for, you know, the world as if it was created by a grand designer. But unfortunately, I would say like a lot of this doesn't seem like it was intentionally made. It seems like we have a scenario where we're just operating through trial and error physically and chemistry, chemically wise. John Richards, what do you think? Well, I want to say a bit about constraints and the the laws of nature because the, the laws of nature they're not laws in the sense of this is what you can do and this is what you can't do. Mm. They, are, they are what we have observed nature doing. Right. And they don't actually restrict nature in any way. Mm. There's, there's no sort of barriers to the ends of them. In fact, they're just models that, that we have noticed happen. And, and in fact, we've changed them periodically for better models when we've discovered that they don't really fit. Right. Yes. For sure. And I like to think of it as well as um, it's not a it's not a law. It's more of a prescription. <laughs> the, the the laws of the universe are more prescribed by just observers of the universe at best, and and we come up but with not, but not proscribed. Right, right, right. There's yes. always this 
hunt for intent by the by dogma or religious minded people when they look in the universe because yes. they need that intent because they need an intenter they need an inventor mm -hmm. they need a creator a designer larry yep. i think you just posted something you want to talk about that real quick yeah uh, um, many times i'll be talking to theists and they'll say oh when i'm talking about evolution they say yeah but that's that's designed by accident that's what you you know so ever all of this stuff came by accident no accident implies thwarted intent you're you're trying to throw a like a creator in your very definition of, of what you think evolution would be yeah no it, mm -hmm. it's 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 designed like i say by the laws of physics and the laws of and chemistry working together you know, if well, you didn't have the laws they, of physics the way they were, there wouldn't be a world to, to have life on. Right. If you didn't have the chemistry the way it is, you know, you wouldn't have beings on that on the world. But language is a very persnickety thing, particularly English language. No, uh -huh. no offense, John, but like the English language, man, it's so rough. It's so rough. If only we could have something more uh less less baggage with every word. Because when we say the laws of physics, right? Yeah. A theist well, can hear that and be like, well, then who made the laws? Right. Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Well, we did. <laughs> <There are, laughs> we're the ones who described the laws yes. and created yes. the laws. Mm. And sometimes the laws need some tweaking. We don't always mm. get them correct. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. But if you if with the worldview of there is a creator, there is an intenter, there is someone who designed all this, a law is a very appealing term to describe limitations that we found in the physical world and prescribe to certain rule sets, right? By yeah. saying a law, you think to yourself, well, I know how laws are made. They're made by yeah. a person who has authority that, yeah. that pans them down to other people. And that could be my God. And what better analogy is there for creator of the universe is humans mm. decide how humans live, but a God decides how reality works. And those are both mm. laws. That makes sense to me. I'm really to go out of here. I pass physics, right? You're right. The, the, the English language, any language, really, it's not sure. just English, mm. has uh, ambiguity. Mm. And what, what I say goes into you, your head and has right. a different connotation. Very, and very unfortunately, the word law is one of those very ambiguous words, because right. in the legal sense, if I was speaking to a lawyer, he would know what he means by the word law. It would be a, a an edict that has been decided by authorities and th that there are sanctions for disobeying. But mm. that's not what we mean by laws in science. Not we just observe something so frequently we think it's likely to be true <laughs> mm -hmm. you know that's... that is such a salient point because it's just a question of what your background is what your education yes. is and i can yes. tell you this as an engineer as a scientist and an engineer right i wear both hats we design a lot of things in our labs but design mm. the word has become a very controversial term i've noted because when I try to talk to people about the work that we do, and then we maybe transition into more of a religious philosophical conversation, I mm. find myself using the same word, design, in both cases, where it's yes. like, well, the world's design, right. like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you just yeah. said design. Therefore, there must be a designer. It's like, well, I don't know a better word that I can I say do. succinctly. <laughs> oh, I'm totally open to it. I'm totally open to it. <laughs> cool. Go. Why don't you give it to me? Give yeah. it to me. Give it to me. Well, the whole point uh, of the show long... is to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, for a long time, I assiduously avoided using the word design mm. in connection with life and or any living thing, because I knew that it would go into the ears of creationists right. and they would assume that it was their designer what done it. Mm. <laughs> and I, yes. I, even had, I, I even had an argument, well, a, a disagreement with, <clears throat> one of our um, national icons, national treasures, uh, and a broadcaster and scientist called Dr. Alice Roberts, who up until recently was the president, the honorary president of Humanism UK. And I met her some time ago and I said, I watch your television shows. And every time you said this has been designed to do that, in relation to some fossil or something, I threw my slipper at the screen. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, I will eat only two times. Why are you getting so upset? Yeah. I've only had to. But I said, no, she's had a whole series. She's a, a number of, a number of series. She's a very great. Slippers do you have, John Richards? 
how many slippers do you have? Or do you just sit with a pile of slippers next to you in the telly? Like, there it goes again. There it goes again. All right. Yeah, or it's TV. on the string. It's on the string. I can reel it in again. <laughs> <laughs> That's design. That's so great. The, the, the thing is, I said to her that, you know, you annoyed me by saying that word. Why didn't you say adapted? That's a perfectly oh. good word. They adapted. And she said, listen to this. She said, we've got to reclaim language back from the creationists. I like that idea too, honestly. Yeah. I do have yeah. like that as well. Yeah. Larry. Well, one point I always like to make when I hear these, I'm on the I'm on Facebook a lot. I do a lot of arguing about uh, theism and atheism. And whenever I see someone post a design argument, I always post a meme because I don't want to type in all this stuff every time uh, that points out that uh, design doesn't get us any closer to a God than deism. It doesn't point to any particular God that we've ever right. um, worshiped in the history of mankind or some job, some God that we don't know yeah. anything about it, Even right. if all of the design claims were true, if we yeah, gave yeah. up and said, yes, okay, it was a God doesn't mean it was yeah. your God. Doesn't no, no. even mean it was a God. It could have been a simulation designer. We could be living yeah. in a simulation. It doesn't get you to your God. It, My favorite God is Uncle 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 I Uncle it was the, uh, Tour God. Okay, go on ahead. You want to? Yeah. <laughs> no, well, that's. What you've mentioned there is my favorite goddess. <laughs> oh, my bad. They don't qualify? Okay, never mind. It's not, right. not Juju you at the bottom of the sea, I would think. Since you Guys, yes. <laughs> I like the idea of using adapted. I want to throw out a story of what prompted this show in the first place, too. When I was, um, <laughs> yes, or let's see, Friday, I was doing a seminar on how we design things in our laboratory. And we, I brought up a really great high magnification picture of a fiber that we're producing. It's like a hollow tube that has to be uh, strong under high pressure. So the walls of the tube have this very porous like material because we designed it to be structurally rigid and, and have a very high structural integrity and tensile strength and all that stuff. But when you do a cross section of it, it looks just like a bone. It looks just like that spongy material. Yes. And a girl who was watching the show or watching my seminar was like, that looks just like a bone, right? Mm. And I was like, yeah, it kind of does. We, that's not by accident. We, what we were doing when we were making this fiber was we asked ourselves what was the most structurally stable yes. and, and resilient kind of form fact that we can develop. And we found like this very poor structure was a great way to handle stress oh. from any sort of direction. So well, that's we, right. did, we didn't stumble in it through a bunch of trial and error steps. We looked into nature and this is where I made the mistake. I said, we looked into nature to find what had the best yes. design. Oh, no. And then yes. <laughs> and made the fiber. And in my head, I'm like, oh, I said the D word. Oh, no. Yeah, is that a word? Word? <laughs> and I stumbled a little bit and yeah. I just kept going. Thankfully, though, the people that I was talking to were both atheists. They were all atheists. So like, it was all good. Uh, but in right. my head, I'm I like, lucky. I need yeah. a better word for this. I feel like I do. What yeah, do you yeah. think, John? Well, you're absolutely right. Because not only has nature open air quotes designed close air quotes everything to fit a purpose hmm. but also it's so, so your spongy bone and and your hollow bones they are the best structures for rigidity right uh, that's why that's why tubes work and you can save all the material that you would have had in the middle if it was a rod make it lighter by taking that middle out and the outside is still as strong so mm -hmm. nature has come up with that air quote design, but right. not only that, nature has designed things like that several times. Right. So, right. Mm -hmm. so, so it's redesigned and then re-redesigned, and right. it, it often comes down to the same design because that's the best physically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Larry. And if you'll notice, that if you look at things that artificial intelligence have designed, uh, they tend to follow the same type of thing. Uh, it's it's open in that it has a lot of air pockets in it, but it has a lot of structural connections in there that don't seem to, they seem willy nilly. They go in every different direction. But when you look at the overall thing, it has the outside uh, purpose uh, design is, is 
correct for the function, but right. the inside is, is just mostly air, but with crisscrossing sure. supporting structures. So you brought up, you guys both brought up really great points. Uh, John, as an, as a amendment to saying design, maybe I could have said, if you look at the nature for what's best adapted for structural yeah. stress, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. then you yep. would see like, we just basically pinpointed yeah. our design towards that. And when mm -hmm. we, and we could have used, for example, artificial intelligence, because we do have something called generational development, which is sort of like a program that designs things through iterative mm. process on mm -hmm. a computer. And mm. it will typically design things based on trial and error and stimuli that we program into a model. And it'll build the mm. most structurally resilient model. It'll probably look exactly like the tube that we already have. But yeah. the problem yeah. is, is that it's a program that was designed by people, but the method that it uses is almost identical to evolution where there's millions yes. of drafts that just don't make it and only yes. one iterative process that keeps getting improved on yeah, yeah. whereas yeah. the tube that we designed we were just like what's a good fit here let me look at oh you know bones are really strong yeah we're going to design it kind of like bones in like mm. three steps we were there in and we made it in like about a month mm. or so so yeah. i find like what design does is i we had the plan we we had the intent to make a very particular thing we designed that specific thing. We made the process to build that thing. And then we made that thing. And that's fantastic. But there yeah. was no, there was very little scrap behind, very little mm -hmm. money and time wasted. And that, yes. in my opinion, is the, the value of design when it's actually in operation, because there's just yeah. so little waste as a result. It's a very lean process when you use it properly. Evolution so so I, want to, Go ahead, I, I, want, I want to revisit the, the story I was telling about meeting Dr. Alice Roberts and talking about the use of words and how they are perceived. Because although she made the point, which is a good point, that we ought to be able to use language to mean what we want it to mean without it being polluted by these creationists who want it to mean what they want it to mean. Sure. That is a good point, but- That's a very good point. We're, we're never gonna do it, you know? I, I'm gonna <laughs> think it's too big what a job. Think? Hold I'm on, hold on. Isn't like 50% growing 51% of non-believers now? Like, this is the time to strike. Why give up now, <laughs> Don right. Richards? Well, well, that's that's true. But nevertheless, it's still too big a job. Changing uh, the, the meanings of words is a mountain of a job. That, so I'm going to stick to using adapted. And I want to give you an example of how difficult a job it is listen, to change. I, I'm just going to throw out one thing. We As a straight white man, you can say that. But listen, outside, that's happening all the time. Like, words are changing, like, every single day. Oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, higher no, of, like, every established group is like, why are words changing? Yeah, yeah. Words are changing. Well, yeah, Follow yeah, the black again, meeting. We make up new words every four hours. Again, <laughs> meetings. again, you're absolutely right. And you brought out straight white man because of the word gay, which, of course, has changed its meaning over the centuries. Sure over has. Life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but but, but, but the, the point is that we didn't have control of that. Mm. It was the population, the culture that made that happen. And Good point. me going out there and saying, when I say design, I mean adapted, is not going to cut much mustard, is it? Mm. And to give you an example of that, um, we had a prime minister called Margaret Thatcher a few years ago, who she introduced a tax that she called the community charge. The idea was instead of charging buildings, you charge everybody. And the opposition referred to this as the poll tax because it, it, it charged everybody who was on the list of poll people, you know, the people who had a vote. Okay. And she kept saying community charge, they kept saying poll tax. <laughs> and eventually the country adopted poll tax for, as the name through the newspapers and so on. And eventually she stood up in parliament and referred to her own community charge accidentally as the poll tax. Right, right. And right. you should have seen, I'm sure it's still a clip that you can find, you should have seen the hilarious reaction in parliament when. She said poll tax. Uh, so the American version of that would be Obamacare. Because when yes, uh, yes, Obama yes. came up with, hey, we don't have health care as a nation. This kind of yes. sucks. And yes. everyone was like, we're just going to disagree with whatever you say, because that's our job is to be the loyal. Yes, yes. 
yes, and mom yes. was like, okay, well, I'm just going to try to make a government Medicaid, you know, that's yes. federally regulated, yes. supported, so yes. that people who can't afford healthcare can get healthcare. Yes. Then you wanted like, to well, widen, a, right? You wanted to widen Medicaid. That's it, Obamacare. They're like, yes, yes, don't exactly. call it after it, me. Don't call it after right. me. Yeah. Gave it four yeah. years. Next thing you know, it's like it's Obamacare, guys. It's just like, oh, okay, we know what that oh, is. <laughs> this, this is this is this is language being weaponized. That's mm. what that is. Yeah. But the the context of it can flip by the culture too. So like mm. words that mean meant like words that meant bad things or were used in a in a in a prerog prerogative prerogative prerogatory prerogatory manner. Mm -hmm. can flip to very good things and be embraced and sure. it, and i imagine like yes it's not controlled by any one person but no. we have a culture right now that is moving towards this non-believing position and i think if we were just to clarify what we mean when we say certain things that are ambiguous mm -hmm. but still mm -hmm. be firm with who we identify as and and mm -hmm. and it's and and maybe even use supplementary words along with that i yeah. feel like that could be a really good way of just continuing the the trend that we're on right now where more people are yeah. you know i think we have more critical thinkers now today than we've ever had in the past yeah. and well, I, I hope I, I hope i live long enough to see design being dis and entitied yes that would be fantastic no see the thing is here's the problem with christianity they, they change words too and I, I know we're getting closer to the half but it's not only that they change words but they adopt the new words faster then the 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 non-believers can go through changing it so like when design came up there was no christianity concept of it and then when science established that like listen here are the limitations of the universe blah 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 they said well now what's intelligent design if yeah. there's design uh, and now there's yeah. intelligent design and that's yeah. us even though you yeah. disambiguized intel design to mean no creator we've now re-implanted a new version of it with intelligence yeah. that had to yeah. come from a higher authority i've got some stuff to say about that. that oh man i know we do well, i know we do <laughs> let's take it after the break though yeah yeah um, after the break all right this is the <laughs> digital free thought radio r and w o z o radio 103.9 lp fm here in knoxville tennessee uh, stay tuned for the second half we'll be right back after this short break Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for just a moment. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year and have over a thousand members. Wow. We have weekly in person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables in other words, if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. We also have weekly um, Tuesday night Zoom meetings. Uh, if you'd like to join us on Zoom, email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com or go to their website at knoxvilleatheist.org or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist. It'll take you to us. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start one. Start one. That's right. Uh, Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Guys, we're going to be talking about listener comments, and I'm sure we're going to delve into intelligent design. How about we meld the two together, and we'll start with one of the comments from First Aid Man 87 Thank you so much for posting to our thread with a very thoughtful comment. His comments on intelligent design and his co his comment is intelligent design is just selected bias. If our planet was made of lava and humans drank that for whatever reason, religious folk would say that so that somehow was designed for us because yeah. it was so unlikely. It seems to me that whatever unlikely thing results would be called design when really any result is probabilistically really unlikely to happen. Just because we are one of them doesn't mean that one of them was predestined. This seems like an adequate response to any intelligent design argument. Thoughts? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Um, what gets me is that they they use the watchmaker argument. Like <clears throat> you're walking along along the beach or in a forest, and you see a watch, you know that's designed. Mm -hmm. And they say, you know, uh, but 
by the same thing. Everything else in the world is designed and the cosmos designed. Well, then why would you notice that a watch is different? I mean, if everything in the world designed by man or by God right. was all designed, they would all look the same, wouldn't they? Yeah. So it, what really sucks is there's so much circular thinking here because like you need to compare, you need a frame of reference to make something uh, a claim like that. And if right. everything's designed, mm -hmm. then you don't have a frame of reference of what's not designed. No. So you can't right. call the true. But if you talk to Christians, sometimes they'll be like, well, God's not designed. But it's like, you haven't seen God. Nope. Can you, he never can you shows show up. Me what God looks like, and you're like, well, yeah. he's invisible, and you, you have a relationship yeah. with him. Like, well, you're you're literally just at this point, you could have just said pixie magic, right? Mm -hmm. Like, there's no true distinction if you don't. And have every a time they magic, use, and every time they use the G word, they're talking about their particular God. Yeah. Right? And every other religion in the world would say, no, it's our God. Right. But cool. they just, yeah, and that's how uh, in God we trust made it on the money. Right. And yeah. every religion can point to it and say, our God. And the true problem, the real frustrating thing is it's not so much that I'm saying that, well, your God's not the product of design. I'm just saying, if you don't have a way to test that claim, you still don't have a frame of reference with literally everything else other than God is a product of design. You still don't know what something that's not a design looks like. So you can't come out with complete justification with the claim when you don't have any frame of reference to even make it. That should be one of the red alarms in your head being like, whoa, 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 I have a problem here. Unless if you want the conclusion to be true. And if that's the yeah. case, then yes, you do have a selective bias. So first what you're saying, saying, yeah, what you're saying, what you're saying is what characteristics do they look for in order to establish that something has been designed by their God? Ooh, very nice. Yeah, that's a good one, too. I like that. All right. Another one because this feeds off of Larry, Big Brown House commented, you know, intelligent design is an old argument. Christians say that the universe looks like it was designed, which implies that there's a designer. The starting point of the argument is to establish some means of distinguishing design from chaos. They'll talk about how we can <clears throat> investigate whether certain archeological funds are natural formations versus ruins of a civilization or something like that. But then the argument concludes by saying that everything in the entire universe is designed. So the original premise of their own argument is refuted by the conclusion. Now, when we look around, we have no way of distinguishing design from chaos exactly. because they just concluded that there is no chaos at all, anywhere. Oh. Has anyone else noticed this other than good me? Good point. It's so very frustrating. Point. It's very true. I've noticed it. I've noticed it. You need to have a frame of reference. You can't be like every can of soda is Sprite. By the way, I don't know what, sp what things that aren't Sprite look, look like. I, I, every, well every every item in my clothes drawer is a sock by the way i don't know what anything that's not a sock looks like everything in my utensil drawer is a fork anything that's not a fork though i don't know what that looks like though it's just like you mm -hmm. you are literally making no sense it's cancer yes. by the way i don't know what things that aren't cancer look like i wouldn't go yes. to that doctor right so why are you to say that everything's by a product of design come on guys come on christians it's that easy <laughs> yeah step up your game <laughs> yeah 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 and of course, intelligent design is a peculiarly American thing oh, that was really? brought, brought about by the laws, the federal laws that forbade the teaching of creationism as a science lesson. Really? Wow. So they had to come up with an alternative way of getting uh, their ideas into science. Right. And that's why they, they came up with the, the, the phrase intelligent design. Right. right. Got round the law. Right. So we have to remember that, yes, words can change and we can come up with new words, too. But so can Christians. So can religious people. Mm. And the problem is Christianity has a great marketing team because they are selling basically a product that costs nothing for them to make, which is yes. essentially false hope. There's no yes. production. There's no inventory. They can yes. sell it. They can distribute it over any line of communication immediately. And people want the, people want the product because everyone's oh. afraid of dying. And, and so yeah. if, if and the, their complaint department is pretty much empty because after you find out that the product isn't real, you're in no position you're, to you're complain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the, and the fact of the matter is, is when you're indoctrinated into this worldview, like how I was, and I believe Larry, you also had the same experience. You don't realize you've been drinking poison until, you know, someone else pulls you out of it. 
And it's almost as disconcerting as being pulled out of the matrix. It's like, wait a second. I had a good time in the matrix. I could eat I, I can learn Kung Fu. Now I'm in a ship in a beat up sweater eating oatmeal every day. Like this sucks. It feels mm -hmm. like you've lost something, but you never really had a true thing to begin with. It takes a deeper appreciation for the truth to oh. realize that Christianity is false. Not necessarily getting a perfect argument to realize that you're in that your reasoning is invalid. It takes a deep appreciation for knowing true things and false things. That's what gets you out of it, the the critical thinking criteria. Larry, what do you well, think? Well, I was just going to make a point. You were talking about it's really hard to get out of it because you don't know you're in it, and it's really hard to pull somebody out of it if, if they, they're thoroughly brainwashed. I was going to make a point yeah. that uh, the only time a Congress, a U.S. congressman was ever killed in the line of duty was trying to get one of his constituents out of uh, Jonesboro. The, wow. the cult of Jonesboro. Wow. They went down there to get him, uh, get the congregant, uh, and uh, Jonestown sent him a, yep. a, a contingent and and killed him. Yeah, and, and the saddest thing is, is the daughter of that lawman is also now in a cult right now. And, oh. and think about that in terms of like one of the most infamous cults in the world that killed a person's father the the offspring of that person who was an, like a young adult at the time is now in a cult herself it's oh. not a fact that bad things happen to you that you get critical thinking or that um you're born with it it's that it preys upon people who think they don't need it and so yeah. if you don't <clears throat> develop it a, 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 a appreciation for true things and false things and truly appreciate it to the point where you're willing to disregard or let go of falsehoods in the search of true things, even if you don't have them yet, you can at least take the position of, I don't know. If you can't do that, you make yourself very vulnerable to those who want to take advantage of you. Yeah, and and what's really bad is that religions tend to use two things that most people want. They want love and they want truth. And religions, you know, will tell you that they own pretty much both of those terms. Yeah, um, you know, we, can't we are those. love. God is love. Right. And, and yeah. the gospels are truth. Yes. In, yeah. With a capital T. Like Jehovah Witnesses don't even call their religion Jehovah Witnessism. They just call it the truth. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Trademark that. Speaking of which, you know, we had a comment from Classic Got. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see how we read this. Classic Got to Me Giddy says design also applies to religion. Take Buddhism. You don't need possessions. You should be happy without owning anything. Be nice and docile or else you'll be reincarnated into a life of suffering. All the basic principles of Buddhism enable the ruling class to take advantage of the common people. Like and most religions. I, uh, and while I consider Buddhist values noble due to some of their inherently humanist principles, if you think about it from this perspective, it's still disgustingly obvious what this religion was designed to achieve. Mm. Yeah. And Larry, you make a great point. Yeah, that is yeah. almost part and parcel with every single religion out there. Yeah, it suffer almost... in this world and have a, have paradise in the next. Yeah, and that that really helps a, an oppressive ruling class. Yeah, John Richards, I'll let you make a comment. Go for it. Go for it. Well, you, Larry's just re reiterated it, but you mentioned false hope, selling false hope, and mm. Larry's mm. given the example of offering paradise after death. Yeah, And in this country, I may have told this on the show before, but in this country, a couple of years ago, we had a group of churches in the city of Bath who clubbed together, printed some leaflets and started standing on street corners, handing them out. And the leaflets promised that if you went and worshipped in their churches, you would have all your diseases cured. There's a whole list of diseases from A to Z. And at the bottom, it said, and any other condition. But in this country, we have something called the Advertising Standards Authority. Mm -hmm. Good for you. And they, they were reported by a couple of skeptics to the Advertising Standards Authority who instructed them to stop giving out these leaflets because they offered false hope. Oh, criminal. Larry, go for it. Well, a couple of things. We do have truth in advertising laws here. However, mm -hmm. religions have never ever been held to those laws mm -hmm. and generally because 90 percent or 80 percent of lawmakers are and right. law enforcers are oh, yeah. all part of that religion oh, that the other, sucks too yeah, that, the, the other part i uh, was another uh, point i was going to make is that uh, the one thing that uh, theists say that atheists take away from them uh, from people is hope 
And there's no reason in this world that you, do, you can't hope for a good afterlife if you want to. You don't have to join a religion, a, um, a strictured practicing religion to, to have hope in an afterlife. You want to hope for an afterlife? Do it. You know, right. there's nothing stopping you. We're not taking anything away. We don't have any doctrines. <laughs> right, there's, right. It's right. gods we don't believe in. We don't, I mean, a lot of us don't also believe in souls. But you can believe in soul if you want to. You want it's, to, if you want to yeah, design yeah. your own heaven. It's a great got, genre of music. What else? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got, uh, we've got nothing to sell. No sell. Right, John or Larry, you had made the comment that most religions have the idea of being docile and not rebelling against authority and mm -hmm. not wanting to have your own positions owned to you and just being nice and only concerned with what you're going to do in the next life. But I know of a religion, and we've had guests on the show who practice Satanism, and mm -hmm. and, and not like the not like the the sense of well, who cares? I know there's two different versions of Satanism, but I feel like in both cases it's the idea of rebelling against dogmatic authority, mm -hmm. valuing your possessions, valuing who you are, making a point to make sure that you aren't docile in the face of administrative changes on you, and I'm like. Why isn't the case that the only one religion where you're fighting for your personal rights and freedom is the one that's demonized by Christians left and right? Huh. And it feels like, huh, there's, there is there is something to that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Anyway, anyway we're going to go to one of our last comments today. And this one is based from an anonymous uh, commenter, messaged me personally and said, um, actually, I'm still an atheist, but I want to come up with a justification for intelligent design. Uh, Proponents of intelligent design claim that the entire universe is designed for humans, and a common rebuttal is that humans cannot naturally exist anywhere in the universe. I mean, as far as we're aware, except for a small planet on Earth, you know, a small part of Earth on land in moderate climates. Yeah. But perhaps the people who claim ID, uh, ID or intelligent design is a thing, they mean that the universe can be conquered by humans due to us having the highest intelligence of all known species. Unlike other species, we can access all parts of the universe. I know it's an assumption, maybe some of it, but as we can understand the world and create solutions, which other animals cannot do, maybe this is what they mean by intelligent design. Whoa. Well, um, that's stretching things. It is yeah, I just don't buy it. <laughs> one at uh, a time. Well, let, uh, John, what do, you, what do you got to say to that? Well, I, I think he's casting a very wide net and trying to catch any, everything in it. Right. Uh, mm. There's no justification for that. And he started out on the right foot by saying that we can only survive in a very tiny part of the universe. So right. in that case, surely the, the description unintelligent design should apply to the rest of the universe. After all, it's a failure, isn't it? If it was intended for us. Yeah, all this black space and radiation. Oh, my gosh. that yeah. You, you kind of overdid it on that side. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, uh, a nice I mean, screensaver. <clears throat> Go ahead. Larry, I mean, you, if that were the case, you would think that he would have put it, you know, in in his holy book. He would have put right. some some of that type of intent in his holy book. But according to the holy book, you know, the earth is supposed to end with uh, Jesus coming back and starting a thousand reign, a thousand year reign of uh, Satan uh, right. ruling the earth for a thousand years, and then it's going to be destroyed. There is no right. intent to go to to the rest of the universe. Right. Uh, and why the heck would he cre even create the rest of the universe uh, in the first place if we're just going to live for a thousand years and die after, you know, pretty much the Bible comes out? Right. It just yeah. makes no sense. Um, my when's thought the, on this. Oh, go ahead. When's, when's the next rapture, guys? Right, right, right. Mm. There's a, there's a time heard. for it. There's a website time yeah. for it. There's a list yeah. of upcoming rapture events. Yeah, yeah. we should make the point that we didn't get yeah. raptured. Nobody that we know of got raptured so, in the last couple of weeks. Yeah, so my idea is this goes back to the docile nature that's um, not necessarily enforced, but it uh, coerced, perhaps is the better term, or encouraged in, in the most fair sense by religion. They want to have docile followers. They want to have docile uh, rebutters or people who disagree with them because that enables them to have more authority and power. And when you make a, a desperately incorrect claim, targeted towards trying to continue to sell your false hope you want people to be like well maybe they got a point too maybe we can all be right 
maybe they are making a sense. If I stand on my head, they do kind of have a point. It's like, no, listen, when someone says ID, it's important for you to, to speak up because it's in being quiet that you give them more confidence to be loud about it. And what we found right. historically <clears throat> true is that the confident, loud voices tend to be the ones that people listen to the most. Silence and, uh, implies consent. Silence can imply some consent. And in many ways, silence can even be betrayal in, in a situation oh. like this. And the stakes are too high. The stakes are simply too high. When we have, mm. as John, uh, Larry pointed out, a majority of congressmen and senators and politicians all caught in this fold that we put ourselves in where they believe in their own separate dogmas. They actually have authority to control other people's lives and they can work in Congress together, both in the word and as their job title we have a problem, especially when we elect them into like court appointed offices that we can't uh, kick them Living out. in the South, it's it's yeah. even it's it's the worst. It's the, rough. The, it's the, so rough. So I the say standard you know, livings down here uh, can be basically traced directly to uh, the religious right, uh, keeping our, our rights down, our personal rights down, absolutely. in deference to their religion. I also say that. <laughs> what they have is privileges. They don't have rights. They have right. privileges. Right, they do. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to throw this out too. Don't make an argument up for them. It would be my other argument too. Like, don't try to rationalize a bad argument for someone. Leave that to them. It's their job to do that for them. Yes. If they're saying yes. something that makes no sense, don't be yes. like, well, this is a way how it can make sense. Like, no, you still don't make sense until you make sense. I'm not going to yes. do it for you. So it's up to the intelligent design people to continue to spout <clears throat> nonsense until they make their nonsense not nonsense anymore. It's not up for me to post ad hoc rationalized nonsense as it's given to me. I have too many other things to think about during my day. And, and I'm not saying that's a, uh, me turning my brain off. That's just me recognizing that they have accountability for the things that they claim to be true. Let yeah. them come up with a method to determine if that's true or not. And in the meanwhile, they are in the, I'm not, considering them as a, a viable option until they yeah. come up with some sort of reasonable credit to put me on the list of things that I should be well, considering. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They have the burden of, of, of proof. There's no need for us to act as advocates for them. Right, right. And we should be willing to speak out when some, and you know, atheists have a bad uh, reputation for, for being uh, adversarially ar argumentative. But truly, if someone is making a, a case that is not true, it is worthwhile to speak up or at least let them know, hey, until you have a better criteria to know if that's true or not, I'm not going to believe that. Or I, I disagree with that based on the fact that you haven't met your standard of evidence for it. And uh, uh, <clears throat> anyone else who thinks the same, feel free to have the position of, I don't know if that guy's telling the truth or not. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying you haven't made a point yet so please establish that with some evidence and i'll be happy to describe it it seems if you're saying an intelligent designer made it you still have this big gap of proving that an intelligent yep. thing exists and what's yes. your criteria for that you can't look at trees and be like well that's proof of it because that's just proof that a tree exists you can't look exactly. at a rock or a sponge or a bone and say that's proof of my god therefore my intelligent god exists it's like no that's just a bone that's just yeah. proof that a bone exists and, and I can tell you how that bone came about with better methodologies mm -hmm. through tested yes. practices designed that was actually or yes. adaptations through life that we can track yeah. through a record, you know, yeah. that's fairly well, accurate. Yeah. More than <clears throat> what they're, what they're doing, what they're often doing here is saying, I can't understand how that could have come about that tree without there being a God. Well, that's commonly known as the fallacy of personal incredulity. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Argument from incredulity. Yep. Larry. Uh, we can't be talking about intelligent design without talking, at least mentioning the Dover trial. Um, you may be familiar with the monkey trial. The uh, what was it? What was the name Scopes. of it? Scopes trial. Thank you. Uh, it took place a little bit south of where I live down in. Uh, what was it? I can't remember the name of the town. Anyway, it's about 50 miles south of Knoxville. Yeah. Uh, in 1925. However, in 2005, there was another um, yeah. evolution trial in America yeah. called the uh, Dover trial in Dover, Pennsylvania. It's on, it was a movie made on it by, <clears throat> excuse me, Nova called Intelligent Design on Trial. I yeah. encourage everybody to go out and, and if they're interested in the subject, go find that and find out how ID 
did not win that case. Yeah, yeah. Design failed, and mostly because they lied uh, right. under oath to try yeah. to uh, protect the fact that they claim the capital P truth. Because they put their faith, their faith above law, because they think they have right. the true ultimate authority, which is why it's so absolutely. Dangerous. Now, here's a weird thing: if they just called it <clears throat> stupid design, I'm going to flip this under my head. If they just called it <laughs> idiotic design, if ID stood for idiotic design, I don't know if I would have a problem with it anymore. Because that would be mm -hmm. a terrible way of designing things. And now mm. I'm like, maybe there's just an idiot designer in the universe. A great <laughs> big idiot. <laughs> That's constantly putting, yeah. making birds with three wings or kids with only half their hearts or like, or tails. Uh, yeah, or tails. And just like, you know, I think I'm going somewhere with this. Oh, by the mm. way, I got some, I got some other things to do. And he's just constantly distracted. I'm like, there, yes. you might have a better argument down that road than yeah. what we appreciate in design. Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, I'm offended. Go on, John. <laughs> <laughs> I'm offended. I'm offended now because you've just blasphemed against Uncle Uncle Oh, mm -hmm. no, my bad, my bad. I do have one last thing I'd mm -hmm. like to say. I'd be remiss if I didn't say it, but um, this is an example I bring out all the time, but a lot of people imply that the complexity of the universe is, is proof part and parcel of intelligent design. But I think we know for a fact that if I had two flash bulbs or I have had two uh, light bulbs and one took one step to screw into a hole and one took a thousand steps to screw into a hole, but made the same light, I think we can argue that the one that's simpler in design is the better design. And that's not just for light bulbs. Mm -hmm. It's true for bicycles. It's true for car engines. It's true for anything that simplicity is the hallmark design. And I'm looking at uh, a room full of guys and there are six nipples across those. <laughs> we don't need any of them. Yet we have them. <clears throat> There's so many extra body parts that we got that we don't need. There's so mm. many extra parts to the universe that exist that are far more complex than they need to be. And as John Richards says, small, tiny, minuscule part of the universe that we're in, surrounded by all this other stuff, it seems like, yo, you could have simplified this so much more than it was now to get to more or less the same test or trial that we're under. The complexity that's been added to the universe is not an indication of an intelligent design. If anything, it's just <clears> more <throat> proof that we are on our, on our own capable of coming up with what we have now through our own understanding, through our own mm. trials and adaptations. And because of that, we don't need to give credit to a God. We can say, hey, we're here, we're in control. Let's make this better. Let's use real design <clears throat> to make this society and tools that we have available better. And stop wasting time on all these old books and dogmas. Think of what we could do if we all, billions and billions of minds, put our minds to improving the lives that we have here on this planet, this life, this life. We make this life better. We can do that yeah. right now. And concentrate well, on how much, how much more so we're alike than we are different. Right. We, yeah. we keep con concentrating on differences. Yeah. No, we need to make a better world just for us as a human species. Yep. And you think about going back, just leaving one less God. That's it, more for the most part. Going mm -hmm. back to our earlier conversation about uh, the ambiguity of words, you used the word own a lot in your little speech just now. Own. Oh, because okay, you, you wanted us to form our own opinions, having critically examined the evidence rather than just take somebody else's downloaded view. Yes. The trouble with that is own has another meaning because it means that something belongs to you as well. And a lot of people possess their religion as though it's part of their identity. Yeah. And that they do that because they don't have any evidence for it. They just accept it emotionally Mm. And and that's why I gave my example just now, saying I'm offended because you you've dissed Uncle Uncle Luke <laughs> because that's their mindset. Yeah, and my yeah. my boss used to say uh, I was a programmer, and I I used to get <clears throat> upset if he if he uh, what dissed my program if he disrespected it, if he mm. you know, said something bad about it. He says, "Oh, I understand. Your program is your baby." <laughs> right, 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 you know, right, right, and, right, right, and right. you know, their religion is their baby. It, you identify with it, you know, that type exactly. of thing. Yeah. You have to get to the mindset where it's like the personal ownership is different from the accountability, or mm -hmm. you want your you want to you yes. want your identity to be separate from the things <clears throat> that 
you yes, yes. might be nearby yes. or in possession of. Yes, right? yes. And that's a hard thing to do. It really is. Yeah. I've got a I've got a four word expression for that. Got it. Ideas can't be your baby. Oh, it's five <laughs> words. <laughs> All right. Well, I can be. Show. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Yeah. We'll make that the title of today's yeah. show. How about that? Yeah. Larry, why do you mind taking us out? I think we're near the end. Uh, yeah, but John hey, Richard, uh, where can we find your stuff yeah. at? Right. Free Thought Channel. That's where it's at. And nice. I'm focusing on taking down Islam more from now on because a lot of people have complained. Are you only targeting Christianity? Oh, no. no I'm not. No. Plus, I Islam seems Buddhism. to be more of a problem for you right now than yes, Christianity yeah. does. Yeah, it I is. want to take out yeah. Buddhism because a lot of when I was in California, a lot of people who are Christians as Christians too cool for me or too bad. I'm now a Buddhist. It's like now you're just getting <clears> Buddhist <throat> ammunitions. They have the exact right. same problem. My cat's shaking, scratching himself. That's why I'm shaking. <laughs> shaking the table oh yeah. no it's an earthquake larry why don't you uh get me out of here <laughs> okay um my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com be sure to click on the blog button when you go there though where we have our ra radio show archives atheist songs and many articles on the subject of atheism you can also find my book atheism what's it all about on amazon by the way um remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when we prove that heavens and hells and souls are real and we haven't. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care, everybody. Say bye. Bye, bye everybody. Bye-bye. Okay. <clears throat> I think so. <laughs>